Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Action RPG lessons. In lesson number 14, we'll write up the code for the boss encounter that we set up in the previous lesson. For the slime boss, we'll look at what we call a state machine. A state machine describes an object that acts differently based on the state that it's in. For instance, if our slime boss is undamaged, he's going to simply stand still. But once the player damages him, he'll start moving around, making it harder to hit him. We control a state machine using a variable. You can use almost any variable you like. And for this one, we're going to use a string. Inside the slime boss start, let's add a state string. So I write self.state equals waiting. That's going to be the first state he starts in. Now you can call this variable anything you like, just like before but I think state says it well enough. We're also going to add four more variables to control other aspects of him. The first is going to be his health. He's going to start with four health. He's going to hide when he gets hit. So I'm going to add a hide timer to control how long he hides for. He's going to move back and forth to the left and right. So I'm going to have a boolean here to control whether he's moving left or right, saying moving right equals false. If you want him to move right at the beginning, you can set it to true. That part's up to you. He's also going to have a speed variable. The more damage he takes, the faster he's going to move, making it harder to hit him. Inside the loop, let's set up all the states. The first state is going to be waiting. So I'm going to say if self.state is equal to waiting. This is very similar to how we set up our directions for our other enemies. Now instead of coding inside here, what I'm going to do is set up the other if statements as well. So if self.state is equal to damaged, so when he gets hit by an attack, And if self.state is equal to moving, so after he's recovered from an attack and he's moving back and forth. And finally, if self.state is equal to dead, meaning he's been defeated. Now, if you try to play your game right now, you're going to get an error because we haven't actually finished these if statements. They don't have an effect yet. I'm going to walk you through the logic of each state, and then we'll test it out. In the waiting state, the boss is not going to move. He's just going to sit there, being an easy target for the player. Now, if he collides with an arrow shot by the player, well, that's when the boss encounter actually starts. And we'll introduce it by making him hide after he gets hit by that first arrow. In order to see if he collides with it, we need to do a collision check. So we need to say if get collision between self and arrow. Well, first, let's destroy the arrow. So we need to say this arrow is equal to that same collision check between self and arrow. I'm going to increase the size of my code section here. And I'm just going to destroy the arrow right away. Next, I'm going to reduce his health. So I'm going to say health minus equals one. And we're going to do a cool visual component here. We're going to change his sprite to be the hurt sprite. So I'm going to say self.sprite equals sprite. And we named it slime boss hurt dot png. Next, I'm going to set the hide timer to control how long he hides. I'm going to say self.hidetimer equals 600. That'll be about 10 seconds. The final thing we want to do is set the state to be damaged. So it'll go into that other state section. 
And now since the state is not waiting, we're now looking at this if statement. Inside that damage state is where the slime boss is going to be hiding. In order to make him hide, we're going to move him down behind that swamp. First, let's count down that hide timer. So as soon as we reach the damage state, we're going to be counting down from 600. Next, we want to move the boss down below the swamp, so we need to decrease his Y. But we don't want to move him down too far, and I'll explain that in Sketchpad here. So when the boss is damaged, he's going to sink below the swamp. And we want to stop him once he's no longer visible, right here. If we don't check for that, he's going to keep moving down and down and down and down and off the screen. And it might be hard to get him back on the screen. So once he reaches this point, we need to tell him to stop going down and stay there. So first, we need to check if that hide timer has run out yet. If it's greater than zero, that means he still wants to hide and he's going to stay down there. Next, we're going to check if his self.y is greater than 50. If so, that's when we want to move him down. So we're going to say self.y minus equals 5. Now once the hide timer has run out, we need to do two more steps. First, we need to bring him back up, and then we need to tell him to go to the moving state. To do this, I need to teach you a new keyword. The next step is going to use an else if. Now in Python, else if is shortened to elif. We use else if if we're trying to choose between two or more options. Now that might not be clear to you right now, but it'll become clear as we progress through this code. So the next step is going to be checking if the hide timer has run out. So if it's less than zero, that means he shouldn't be hiding anymore, and he should come back up. But we want to make sure that he doesn't go too high, otherwise he'll start flying off the screen. So we need to make sure his Y position doesn't progress past where he was before, which was 250. If so, we're going to increase his Y. And now that he's no longer hurt, we can change his sprite back as well. So we can say self.sprite equals sprite and back to the slimeboss.png. So this takes care of that in-between phase where he's coming back up and we can start seeing him again. We need to add a third piece to set him to move. So once he's reached that self.y of 250, that's the time when he switches state. So we need another else if here, or elif. So once again, I'm going to be checking if that hide timer is less than zero, but in this case I'm going to be checking if his y position has reached 250. So if it's greater than or equal to 250. In that case I know that in between phase is done, and just to make sure he's at the right position I'm going to set his y equal to 250, much like how we did the player to set his limits. And we can finally set the state equal to moving. All right, so what happens if he's moving? Well, first we want to check if he's moving right or not, and then change his position by the speed. So we'll say if moving right is equal to true, will increase the x by the speed. And if moving right is equal to false, we'll decrease the x by the speed. So when do we want him to turn around and start moving left or right? Well, when he's reached the edge of the screen. 
in order to accomplish that, we just check if his x is big enough or small enough. So we'll say if his self.x is greater than 500, that means he's gone to the right side. We're going to set moving right equal to false. So he starts moving left now. And if he's on the opposite side, so if his self.x is less than negative 500, we're going to say moving right is equal to true. That takes care of his movement, but what happens if he gets hit by an arrow when he's moving? Well, he's going to take more damage, and we're going to go back to the damage state. First, we have to start that off with a collision. So if he collides with an arrow, once again, we're going to destroy the arrow. So we need to write that same collision check. This arrow equals get collision between self and arrow. And we're going to destroy it. We're going to reduce his health, so self.health minus equals 1. We'll set the sprite once again to be that damaged sprite. So slime boss hurt dot png. And here we need to do one more check, because what if the boss has run out of health? We don't want to go to the damage state anymore. We want to go to the dead state. So first, we need to check if his health has reached zero. And if so, we'll go straight to the dead state and say self.state equals dead. But otherwise, we just want to go to the damaged state. So we'll say else self.state is equal to damaged. But we also want to set that hide timer once again to be 600. And one more thing is we want to increase his speed to make him harder to hit next time. I'm going to increase his speed by 2. So the next time he goes back to the moving state, he's going to be that much faster. All right, that's three of the four states done. The final one is what happens when he dies. Well, we want him to sink back down into the swamp, and this time we're not too concerned about where he stops, because he's not coming back up. So we can say self.y minus equals 5. And just as a test message for ourselves, which we'll expand upon later, if his y reaches 0, we can do a print and say u1. And then destroy the slime boss. I'm sure you want to test this, and I do too. So, give ourselves the equipment, so we'll get a sword, we'll get a bow, and we'll give ourselves 30 arrows, and let's see what happens. If I go up to the boss room and shoot an arrow at him, oh, I get an error. Let's go and fix that. So hide timer is not defined on line 19. I think I just forgot a self somewhere. Here we are. So in each if and else if here, I forgot to add the self dot in front of hide timer. Make sure you add those as well. And I see now I forgot to do the same thing for the moving right. So fix those two. I'll do another check, make sure everything's in order. I think so. Let's try it out again. If I shoot him with a bow, there, he hides. And after about 10 seconds, he should come back, and he'll start moving once he does. There he is, and look at him go. If I shoot him with another arrow, He'll hide for another 10 seconds, and when he comes back, he's going to be faster.
Look at that. It's much harder to hit him with an arrow now because you have to be you have to plan to where he's going to be. Okay. When he comes back, he's going to be as fast as he's going to get, but he only has one health left. There he is. Oh. Okay, shooting an arrow, and I got him. And I got my print message, which means the slime boss has been destroyed. All right, looking great. The next lesson is going to be a challenge lesson. We're going to improve our boss encounter even further and make it a bit more challenging. I'm going to explain the tasks needed for that, and you'll code them. I'll see you there.